Hello families, this is Heather McDonough. I am your positive behavior support coach at Briarwood Elementary School. I am here to go over some strategies a little bit deeper in follow up to the last video that was aired in the e-news. I want to show you where you can get all these resources, our wonderful website that we have for you, and different uh, strategies that you can use in setting up the home learning environment for your students. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. This is our positive behavior support website for Briarwood. In this website, you will find multiple resources for social emotional well being and ways that you can help your students learn at home, some structures, some expectations of the school. So I'm going to kind of walk you through this right now. So if you go to the menu option here and parent resources, you will find a PBIS at home. So positive behavior support at home. So I want to talk you through this because there's some strategies I think will be very helpful in setting up that learning environment at home. So ways for parents to support virtual learning. That's where you're going to find all this information right on here at this website. You can also reach out to me. My email is listed on here um, with any questions you might have. So number one, first and foremost, setting expectations. The teacher that you have, your child has is going to set the expectations for the virtual learning environment. But just so you understand some of those expectations, I'm going to go over them here today. So our school expectations are be respectful, be responsible, and be a problem solver. I talked about this in the last video, but I'm gonna hit it again, because it is so important that we have clear expectations for our students and they know what those expectations are. So the teachers are most likely going to have those posted in an area that the student can see it, and they're gonna review those expectations as well. It would also be helpful if you review these at home to support your teacher in the classroom in the virtual setting as well. Now, something to think about is you could have home expectations that matches the Briarwood expectations. So just as you see here, there's these little bullet points with ways to follow that expectation. That's something you can consider doing for the home environment as well. You could print this out and post it so it matches those school expectations. The more common language that we have and the more we work together, the clearer the expectation is gonna be for the student and they're not gonna know exactly what to follow. So you don't have as many hiccups. I also have a downloadable file here that you can edit that as well, instead of just the image. So first you start off with clear expectations, understanding the school expectations and environment expectations. Uh, so that's number one. Once you got that done, you're really going to want to understand the schedule. Um, talk to your teacher. If you don't know the schedule currently, find out from the, uh, your child's teacher. So there's different types of schedules, uh, but it's important that you know your classroom teacher's schedule. When's lunch going to be? When's recess going to be? When is the live uh, streaming video going to be? And then, of course, set that up. It's great if you could print a daily schedule or a weekly schedule and post that for your child. They can even go ahead and cross off things as they happen. That helps keep them engaged and on track. If you are interested in a free schedule maker, I found this website, click on that website, and you can go ahead and actually fill in the time slots, what's expected. I strongly recommend, I'm actually gonna use that for myself as well, um, to use that and keep your child on track. A lot of these skills I'm gonna be talking about also help with executive functioning skills. So if your child has been diagnosed with ADHD, or even if they haven't and they have trouble getting off track, these are some organizational skills that are going to help you and your child really stay on track. Um, teach checklists and to-do lists. This is something that I've worked with a lot of students before, and I know the teachers do as well, but teaching explicitly how to create a checklist or to-do list is going to be so helpful in making sure things are organized and accomplished. This is a skill that I learned probably in middle school um, that I wish I would have learned earlier. I use it all the time. And you can really start off by teaching them maybe a grocery shopping list. Show them how you do a list, maybe bullet points or checkpoints. You can also have lists for academics. So here you see a writing checklist. These are great ideas to remember 
um, and even print off. So if you are interested in more of these, please just let me know. Go ahead and shoot me an email and I'll help you out with that. I also want to let you know I'm available for Zoom conferencing if you have specific questions and have asked the teacher a ton of questions and um, want another perspective or want to work together as a team. I am here uh, for all of that and I can Zoom with you as well to go over some of these expectations, scheduling, things like that. So you are at home and you're with your family all the time. Your students are, uh, your children are now your students, your students are your children, right? So we're spending a lot of home time together, which is wonderful and conflict may have arisen, I don't know. Um, but if it does, then I'm gonna talk about some strategies that you can use. Uh, I know uh, sometimes growing up, I remember, stop that stop you know you get at your wits end and you don't know what to do so i'm going to talk about some strategies when you are there and when there is conflict how we work in the school to do some restorative practices and restorative questioning so this is a great uh visual tool and you know there's an idea you could even print this off the students are pretty familiar with some of these practices in that reflective thinking on whatever the conflict might have entailed. It is also important if you are going to use this questioning and work through this restorative process that the student is in a calm state. So they've re returned back to baseline. Um, so they might be escalated. You move through that de-escalation stage, that calming stage, and try and remain calm as much as possible. I know it can be very challenging um, and that's why self-care is so important. So how are you going to, when they're at baseline, going over what happened. So for those who show challenging behaviors to question what happened, what were you thinking at the time? What have you thought about since it happened? These questions, uh, who has been affected by your actions and in what way? What do you need to do to make it right? These are reflective questions that are really going to help the student analyze their own behavior, understand perhaps why it happened, and then reflect and make change and growth. Because we all make mistakes. We talk about this in academics all the time, but we also make behavioral mistakes. I, as an adult, make behavior mistakes. I'm sure that at some point, we all of us as humans have made mistakes behaviorally. And so it's important that we allow that space and time to reflect on our behaviors and have them think about what might have happened. Um, and then if perhaps a sibling was affected, think about uh, they could talk and give their voice on the situation, ha allow the space for them to talk. Another good idea here is that you could use a talking piece. So the person who has the piece is talking and then when you don't have the talking piece, it is your turn to listen. So setting those guidelines. Um, so when they have, there has been a situation that's happened, they're in an escalated state. Before the escalation even happens, it's great to have a space where they can decompress. This is called a calm corner in the classroom or a relaxation state spot. Um, this is a place, a tool, where you can regain your sense of understanding, sense of space, and just get to that uh, calm state so you're able to talk things out. Um, when we get very escalated, our lid flips, we know that in the brain, and then you're unable to think about how you can actually solve it in a logical place in your mind. So it's important that they have a space where they can decompress, they can step back from those big emotions and return to baseline. I do want to show you here, I talk about what's in a calm corner, but it's always good to create a calm corner with your students, maybe even model, have your own calm corner and show what's in your calm corner. Um, so you can click here, there's more information about calm corners with videos, um, places you can uh, know what to purchase if you're looking for a calm corner. And you, you can make them very cheap. There's a lot of dollar store items that you can get. Um, oh, actually, I got this like little frog. Um, it has like little jellies in it. And this was from the dollar store. So you can make them 
uh, pretty cost effective. And also just printing calming pictures is helpful. Now last but not least is setting up incentives and rewards. This is gonna help kids stay engaged. It can help with goal, goals and goal oriented decisions. Um, and then thinking about what they actually want. Now in the book by Gary Chapman, The Five Languages of Love, if you haven't got a chance to read that, I would strongly suggest it. It's an amazing book. But thinking about how rewards based in our love language really affect us. So first of all, knowing what your love language is, what the love language is of your child, um, how they like to show and receive love. So maybe it's quality time or words of affection or receiving gifts or physical touch or acts of service. So for me, acts of service does not rank as high as words of affection. So when I feel or hear words of affection, I feel more valued and loved, this is just personal, than acts of service. But for my husband, it might be acts of service. Or for your student, it might be receiving gifts. So this is a really great dinner conversation that can springboard into the calm corner and ways that we like to be calmed down, ways that we like to have rewards, and what is most effective for us. I'm also going to do some more videos on setting up um, behavior charts at home or setting up engagement strategies that are just going to help you on this virtual learning adventure. I'm definitely here to help. I want to remind you that you are made of tough stuff. You got this and we are here to help you on this amazing adventure that is virtual learning. Thank you so much for taking the time to go over these strategies. Please know I'm here and have a great day, parents.